the long or the short? Which receives more of your attention and efforts, building your income or building your wealth? You're listening to Business Lunch with Roland Frazier. This is your seat at the table. When I ask people this question, most fall into one of three categories. One, they focus on creating as much as income as possible in the short term, and they don't really think that much about wealth in the long term. Two, they focus on creating as much wealth as possible in the long term, and they don't really think that much about income in the short term. Or three, they focus on creating both income for the short term and on building wealth for the long term. The third category, unfortunately, is quite rare and makes up the smallest group of people that I meet in my travels. The short. Focus on income in the short term. Most of us have learned that the most important thing to focus on is increasing our income. After all, if you don't have enough to pay your bills, things can get nasty pretty quick. On the other hand, if you have a substantial income, you can pretty much have anything that you like, especially now in the sharing economy. You can rent Lambos, you can have Rolls Royces through Turo, you can get beachfront mansions through Airbnb and VRBO, you can fly almost private on jets with JetSmarter and services like that. More and more people are opting for a lifestyle based on what they can afford to rent versus what they can afford to own. There's nothing wrong with that, but over the past few generations, the amount that we spend on rent has crept steadily upwards. It was 36% of income for baby boomers, 41% for Gen Xers, and now we're approaching 50% for Gen Z, according to a study from Rent Cafe. So you scheme and you plan and you work and you struggle to create as much income as possible, whether through a traditional job or by starting and working in your own business, or whatever it takes to create the income that you need to live the lifestyle that you desire. However, If you're primarily focused on income, particularly income from your efforts, then it's really easy to get stuck on the dancing bear hamster wheel. As long as you can work or dance, then those that you work for and to whom your efforts provide value will continue to throw money at you, which will continue your income. And if you can dance even better and in ways that provide even more value, then they'll throw even more money. But whenever you're no longer able to or willing to dance, then the money stops too and your income is gone. And that's particularly seductive, and it's an insidious trap for high-income earners like coaches, consultants, authors, experts, speakers, employees, even from mid-level all the way up to the C-suite, professionals like attorneys, doctors, chiropractors, dentists, surgeons, architects, accountants, all of these professional services, because when the dancing stops, the money stops with it, and then it's time to face the music. There's frequently no wealth to fall back on, and you're either forced to start dancing again or forced to substantially lower your standard of living. If you're lucky, you might have accidentally created a business that can be sold, but most employees never receive substantial equity that accumulates any real value in the businesses they work in, except for perhaps tech unicorns like Apple or or Google or Dell. And most business owners of dancing bear type businesses, those professional and service businesses I mentioned, they never create a business that anyone would want to buy because without the dancing bear themselves, the business has little or no value and the dancing bear is the person who gets compensated. So if you sell the business, then it needs a new dancing, new new bear to dance, right? So the person that's buying it then is dancing and they're going to be receiving the salary. So they're effectively just buying a job. And the focus on all of in all of these situations I'm talking about to so focus on income. So it's great while it's coming in, but it's not so great when it stops. If you fall into this category with a focus on income, then you might be well served by thinking also about beginning to focus on the long or or building wealth in addition to your income. Without the long, you're going to face some pretty tough decisions when the short begins to dry up and eventually it will historically dry up for most people. So let's talk about the long. Focus on wealth for the long term. Those that have lived through severe recessions or depressions are usually much more focused on building wealth than income. They believe in sacrificing short-term niceties in exchange for the security of weather the storm wealth. And similarly, many entrepreneurs find themselves always reinvesting their income into their businesses with the intention of growing them and someday cashing out for big payday. And the philosophy here is that you're going to play the long game and invest for the future while deferring short-term desires that income could otherwise be deployed to satisfy. And people who sell physical things are particularly affected by this uh, as they purchase inventory, they sell it, then they have to purchase even more inventory while their business is growing, they have to buy more media to sell the new and larger amounts of inventory, and then they even have to hire more people 
to help them run their businesses and manage increased inventory, increased operations, and customer service and increased media. So it's a it's another kind of hamster wheel. So anybody that's owned a selling physical things business is all too familiar with that challenge. Even if you don't have the need to continually invest in your business to build its growth and value selling physical things, most entrepreneurs find themselves constantly investing in capital expenses, labor, media, etc., just to increase the overall value of their business. Those without businesses who are focused on building wealth might do that through investments in stocks, whether managed by professionals or doing their own trading, real estate, purchasing collectibles, buying other businesses, or, or something else. And they're focused on wealth or the long, but they frequently do that to the detriment of the short, which can leave them starved for the income they need to support themselves in their current lifestyle or the income that they need to support their long game focus. So I can't count how many very land rich or asset rich friends and acquaintances I've known over the years that got into financial trouble because they were too heavily focused on the long and they ran out of the income needed to support their wealth building. And also speaking as someone who's faced major personal challenges and setbacks myself and with a spouse who several years ago faced major medical challenges that threatened to prematurely end her life, I can tell you there's also the chance that the long game you're playing just might never have a chance to play out. That is, life may have other plans for you. So if you focus exclusively on saving up for a rainy day that you never even get to see, then you're going to miss out on a lot of life in the meantime. This leads us to the long and the short. So the solution here is pretty pretty simple, really. You can have it all, the amazing lifestyle offered by the short and future income replacement security offered by the long. You just have to focus on the long and the short at the same time. Similarly to a golfer that must master the driver and irons, long game tools to move the ball from the tee box down to the fairway towards the putting green and then have to master their wedges and putter, the short game tools to sink the ball in the hole, you too must master the long and the short to fully maximize your financial life and provide everything that you want throughout your life, no matter how long or short or challenged or not it may be. To be wealthy and ready for retirement, if you choose to retire, or prepared for a drop in income if you can no longer work to earn that income. You'll want to have actual wealth assets that you can look to for support. They can support you either by selling them off strategically to generate cash flow or to generate passive income that is not from your dancing bear efforts. To be prepared for downturns in the economy and potentially falling asset values in difficult economic times, and to provide you with the income you need to continue to support your lifestyle and assets, you also need to focus on generating income for the short. The happy solution is to have both short game income and long game wealth assets. Sadly, that's not the the norm. That is the exception for people much more frequently than it is the rule. I know lots of people that make 100, 500, even a million, 100,000, 500,000, even a million or more a year that don't have wealth assets. So even though they have an amazing lifestyle and there's nothing wrong with this as long as they can continue to generate that income, but they might find themselves in challenging times if they can't be a dancing bear any longer and the music stops. So I know many people who also who get into financial trouble uh, and they end up having to have to sell their wealth assets at deep discounts to raise cash in tough times because they don't have enough income from the short game to support those assets. They were focused too much on the long. You need to balance the long and the short. And to do that, it makes sense to put together a strategy for income creation and sustainability coupled with a wealth asset growth plan. This is part one of that to discussion to give you the overview. And in my next few thoughts, I will cover specific long and short strategies that I've found to be the most effective with step-by-step -step breakdowns for each. So let me know what you think of this. I would love to hear from you uh, and share if you find this helpful. Wow.